Okay, so we've got this all on one layer. We've got multiple backgrounds to kind of check it. You can see on the white, I've got spaces I need to fill. We're gonna address those problems after. I, I've also need to, um, to finish cutting it out. So I've been working around the bottom. I'm gonna continue that. You see with my soft edges, I've just left them hard for now. But now that it's all on one merged layer, it makes it a little bit easier to find these edges. The most you want to zoom in is 100%. I prefer around 50% pixel resolution so that I don't get too picky too soon. Because this is what your print would look like to the, to the naked eye if you had a magnifying glass. And I want my prints to look good if you take a magnifying glass to it, but I don't need you to take a microscope to it. So even though this hair, it's very stringy hair, wiry hair, it's not soft enough that I can just use a soft edge brush and erase yet. But I will get there. I just need to cut out enough shape so it has some character. I'm trying not to be too much of a perfectionist. We can only do our best. You'll also notice that I have the navigator open in my upper right hand corner of Photoshop, which helps me see the whole creature, even when I'm just zoomed in. Because sometimes you can get disoriented, like what part of the creature am I actually doing and what makes sense. So it's nice to have this. I don't really need my sketch anymore, even though I have it behind the scenes in the uh, lower right hand corner and cutting it out isn't the final step we're going to be dodging and burning to match the lighting and then we're going to be using clone stamp to kind of help transition textures sometimes that's needed a lot sometimes it's needed just a little I'm hoping it's just needed a little for me this is a good example where I can use the navigator and kind of see, okay, maybe I want to use some of this overlapping area to transition from the, the hips to the tail. It's all on one layer now, it's all one texture. So even though that might be ground, in this instance, it's, it's the underside. And I like merging it before you cut it out because then everything becomes intentional. It's not just because Magic Wand told you to cut it out. You get to decide where you keep edges and where you take them away. And especially if you've been erasing with a low opacity eraser, like we did so much with our landscapes, you need to merge it first, otherwise you have lots of kind of low opacity content in your design that will look different depending on what the background is because parts of your design are transparent without your meaning them to be. So by merging everything together, you're helping to ensure that it's opaque everywhere. And if you need to, that's helping some of you when you had kind of transparent, soft edges um, without anything behind it. So then we had to 
merge them together and copy it many times so that you would get something that's 100% opaque to actually cut out from. I should probably zoom in a little bit more than this. Yeah, 50% is kind of the magic one. Now notice this, this photo reference is a lot grainier than this. And that's where the clone stamping is going to help. Kind of bring some of those textures together. But first I want to get a nice clean cutout. This, this is how you get practice with your, your tablet, for sure. And then there are some tricks of selection we'll, we'll use Photoshop for. But we're trying to mostly learn just the, the really solid principles behind it. Okay, instead of the white background, I'm going to change to the gray. I can choose these highlights in a more informed way. That white can be kind of overpowering. And when you have light hitting your creature directly, you're going to have white on your creature. Don't think you just hit delete all white just because. But this way it's intentional. Those whites are intentional. And remember, we talked from the very beginning when you were kind of looking at different Pokemon or a different inspiration, it's the silhouette that matters. And here is a great example of where you get to control the silhouette very directly. I'm defining the back edge of my creature right here. I'm deciding what to cut out, what to leave in. So even though it just feels like busy work, it's actually pretty not I wouldn't say creative, but it's pretty essential to your control of the overall design. Your art your authorship can be seen in each of these decisions. Now because this is not a sticker design. This is a design that's going to be then put into a background, into your fantasy landscape. Ultimately, these edges will overlap other surfaces, but having a nice clean cutout will make that a lot easier. And you should not start assignment three, where we put our creatures into the background, until you have a nice clean cutout of your fantasy creature. See how my ears have this little ring of white around them? That's annoying. <laughs> but it could help me ultimately in this next phase. Okay, so I've got it all cut out. I want to make sure that background is filled with gray. It accidentally got moved a little bit with my move tool. So I'm going to go ahead and lock these so they don't shift on me, even though they'll be turned off before I submit it. Now I can crop it. I don't need that bottom anymore. I don't need that sketch. I just need to have my creature fully there. And it looks pretty good. It would make a, a fun digital print, but it still feels collaged, right? Like everything feels a little too separate, even though the colors match. And then there are some areas, especially in here, where the transitions have holes cut in them. Right? 
So the next step, once it's saved, is to go above your merged layer, and you're going to create a new layer. And this is going to be a special effect kind of transition layer, like a texture overlay. But we're going to call it a clone stamp layer. And this is where clone stamp is going to be pretty essential for all of you. How do we merge some of these textures together? How do we blend from these scales into the pine cones? Right? The fur into this, these colors into this, these ears into this. So this is what we do with the clone stamp layer. We lock the layer be underneath so we don't accidentally paint on the wrong place. We use the clone stamp tool, which is underneath the paintbrush. We set the, the settings for the clone stamp tool to be um, all layers. And then we turn off a background layer so it doesn't accidentally carry the gray forward. Okay, now, for instance, in here, how can I fill in that gap, that texture? Well, I want to do it at 100% opacity, 100% flow, but like your eraser, a very soft brush that's pressure sensitive to size. Okay, And then I'm going to target a texture that I think will be useful in that area. You don't want to overdo it. You can hold, um, I'm zoomed in to almost 50%, at 33%. You hold down Option to target a texture and then you can paint it in where you desire it. Now because this is on a new layer at the top of everything, you are not deleting any of your pixels by doing this. Instead you are giving kind of a, a textured overlay layer to adapt from. All right, there's a big gap in there. Let's see if I can fill that in. Little areas like that. That's too big. So this goes to the quality of your reference. You need to have enough reference and enough variety of it that you can steal from the clone stamping a little bit. And then by making it pressure sensitive, you can really define the shape as well. It will give you a little preview kind of ghost image of what it would look like. But by using the pressure sensitive tablet, you can decide how, how big that actually is even add a little bit of a highlight to the bottom there. I like that highlight. I might add a little bit of that to here. And you just move your target as you go, as needed. That white tooth, I want to paint a little bit of that brightness onto this tooth as it catches the light. Now if I wanted this fur other places, I could do that. I can have it kind of coming out from here a little bit, like hairy ears or from underneath. This can help a lot with transitions. Like this is out of focus, even though I like those spikes. Maybe this fur can help with that transition. Then back here, this is a big difference, right? From this to this to this. Let's get some of these scales. Let's put them on my pine cone. Now I'm doing it all at 100%, which is really heavy-handed, but because it's on a separate layer, 
that allows me to um, 